again. Um, I hope you've been having a good day. Um, I have been here at my house, like y'all been at your house all day, and um, I was trying to think of what book we should read today, and I picked out a few. <laughs> my dog kept on barking today, interrupting my train of thought, um, and it was aggravating, and I couldn't think, and so I moved into a different part of my house so that I could have just quiet um, so that I couldn't hear my dog barking and y'all couldn't hear my dog barking and then my next door neighbor started <laughs> mowing the lawn and that interrupted me and then my dog started barking at the lawnmower and so today has been filled with interruptions and I was like you know what that helps me pick out my book one of the books that I was thinking about reading is called Interrupting Chicken by David Ezra Stein and I was like this this is a sign I I've been interrupted so much let's talk about interrupting today have you been interrupted today or maybe have you been interrupting others today I hope not but if you have been interrupted or are interrupting if that's one of your habits um, you will really enjoy this book especially this little girl little chicken because she likes interrupting or maybe she doesn't like it but she sure does it a lot and also i don't know if you notice the shiny metal here this book is a caldecott winner um it says a caldecott honor book and uh caldecott uh winners are the books out of that year that have the most amazing beautiful interesting illustrations now the illustrations are the pictures and so the illustrator won an award for all the pictures in this book and so I really like it for a lot of reasons it's funny um, it had to do with my life today and it's a, an award winner um, so here we go it, it starts on the cover actually this book is called interrupting chicken right Papa yes now please don't interrupt the story already begun and we haven't even started. It was bedtime for the little red chicken. Okay, my little chicken, said Papa. Are you ready to go to sleep? Oh yes, Papa, but you forgot something. What's that? asked Papa. A bedtime story. Do you guys have bedtime stories too? Somebody in your family read to you or maybe you read to them. It's very important to read and bedtime is an awesome time to read. All right, said Papa. I'll read one of your favorites. And of course, you're not going to interrupt the story tonight, are you? Oh, no, Papa, I'll be good. Hmm, the fact that Papa is asking her about not interrupting already makes me think that she's got a bad habit. Ooh, this is the storybook that he's picked out. Look how big it is. See how many pages? It's not just one book. This is a, a collection of stories. You may have one of these in your house that uh, maybe there's 10, 20, 30 stories in there. And this book is called Hansel and Gretel. These are fables, folk tales, fairy tales. These types of stories are make-believe and teach us a story. There's always a theme, some kind of lesson for us to learn so that we don't end up doing something that the characters did. So I don't know if you've ever read the story, but this is a good story. If you haven't read it, you should look it up. Hansel and Gretel were very hungry. Deep in the woods, they found a house made of candy. Nibble, nibble, nibble. They began to eat the house until an old woman who lived there came out and said, what lovely children. Why don't you come inside? And they were just about to follow her when I'll jump down a little red chicken and she said, don't go in, she's a witch. So, Hansel and Gretel didn't. The end. <laughs> now, that's not the actual story. 
This is the little red chicken interrupting her papa's story. Chicken. Yes, papa. You interrupted the story. Now try not to get so involved. I'm sorry, papa, but she really was a witch. Well, you're supposed to be relaxing so you can fall asleep. <sighs> Let's try another story. I I'll be good. Hmm. I'm sure y'all have heard of this story before. We're still in that big storybook that has a collection of stories. And this is the story of the Little Red Riding Hood. And here she is. But she's not talking to a person. She's talking to a big bad wolf. Take this basket of goodies to Grandma, said Little Red Riding Hood's mother. But don't stray from the path. Those woods are full of danger. Red Riding Hood skipped along through the deep woods. And by and by, she met a wolf who wished her good morning. And she was about to answer him when... Out jumped a little red chicken and she said, Don't talk to strangers! So, Little Red Riding Hood didn't. The end. Now you can tell that's definitely not how the story goes. Sounds like the little red chicken doesn't like bad things to happen to people. So she just cuts them off. Chicken! Yes, Papa. You did it again. You interrupted two stories. And now you're not even sleepy. I know, Papa. I'm sorry, but he was a mean old wolf. Yes. Now get back into bed. Okay, Papa. Let's try one more little story, you know. I'll be good. Does this chicken look sleepy at all to you? She's standing up on her bed. It's not really how you go to sleep. Poor Papa. Ooh, look what story they picked out. It's about chickens. Now, I'm sure you've heard about this story, Chicken Little. Chicken Little was hit on the head with an acorn. The sky is falling, she thought, and she was about to run off and warn Goosey Lucy and Ducky Lucky and Henny Penny and everyone on the farm that the sky was falling when... Out jumped a little red chicken and she said, don't panic, it was just an acorn. So, Chicken Little didn't. The end. Chicken. Yes, Papa. You did it again. Oh, Papa, I, I couldn't let that little chicken get all upset over an acorn. Please read one more story and I promise I will fall asleep. But Chicken, said Papa, we're out of stories. Oh, no, Papa, I can't go to sleep without a story. Well, then, said Papa, Oh, yawning. Why don't you tell me a story? Me? Tell a story? Said the little red chicken. Okay, Papa. Mm, okay. Here we go. Mm. Have you ever told a story to anybody in your family? You got to make it up. Look, she's holding a notebook and a pencil. Let's see what she comes up with. Ah, oh, how cute. You can tell it's by her. It's a brand new story by Chicken. Bedtime for Papa. Oh, it's a story for Papa at bedtime. She says, once there was a little red chicken who put her Papa to bed. She read him a hundred stories. She even gave him warm milk, but nothing worked. He stayed wide awake all. Uh-oh. I don't think that's part of her story. Who's interrupting now? Oh, no. Papa? Good night, Papa. The end. I love this story. It is uh, so much fun because... It really is kind of like true life. I am sure that you um, have interrupted people before. I know I have interrupted people before. And so this is just a silly, funny book that um, kind of plays off of that. 
And um, one other reason I like this book so much is it encourages us that we can make up our own stories. We can get out our papers, pencils, crayons, markers, whatever, even go on the computer and type up a story and draw pictures online and make up your own stories. You know, these people like David Ezra Stein and the illustrators, all, all kinds of authors and illustrators, they were just like you and me. Uh, before they became famous authors. All they did was put their thoughts that were inside their head down on paper. And now it's a famous story that we can all read together. So I would like to encourage you, get out your paper and your drawing materials or go on the computer and make up your own story. And who knows, maybe you'll have time to tell your own bedtime story tonight. Hopefully no one will interrupt you though. I hope y'all have a wonderful rest of the day and I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye.